Assalamu alaikum girls. Today uh, we are going to start the, the second lecture of the designs and it is going to be on mechanism of action of enzyme, how enzyme acts. I'm leaving the topic of characteristics of enzymes um, because I feel first you should know about the mechanism of action and okay yesterday we talked about what is the meaning of enzymes and what is metabolism, anabolism, catabolism. We also talked about metabolism in a different way about its energy transfer, how energy is released in catabolism and absorbed in anabol anabolism. And then we talked about catalyst in a non-living environment and they are called as biocatalyst and living environment and we also call them enzymes we know that enzymes are protein in nature they speeds up the biochemical reaction and in doing that they are not changed they remain there in the medium they do not are, they do not change their shape they are not spent during the reaction and uh, the reactants here are called as substrates. And when it converts into something new, they are called as products. And this is done by enzymes. This is enzyme substrate complex. And here it is mentioned as active site. The specific geometrical shape of enzyme is called as active site. And then we talked about this enzyme substrate complex how it is formed and how enzyme acts on it and converts into products so then we talked about the minimum energy required to start a reaction and we know that every reaction in the world requires that energy to start a reaction the work of enzyme is to lower such barrier enzyme lowers this hindrance by reducing the demand so that reaction proceeds at a faster rate. So this is this was the graph where we mentioned that how activation energy is lowered in enzymes. We haven't mentioned the mechanism, but enzymes are lowering the activation energy. Then we talked about intracellular enzymes and extracellular enzymes. Today, we will talk about mechanism of enzyme action, how enzymes act on the substrate. Uh, and there are two models about it. One of them is lock and key model and the other one is induced fit model. Before going into the detail, uh, I must tell you enzyme first attaches itself to substrate and a temporary enzyme substrate complex is formed the ES complex is formed. As soon as the ES complex is formed, enzyme starts doing its charm. Enzyme, enzyme starts doing its work. It speeds up the reaction by doing something, by disrupting the bonds or changing the orientation. It does something. As a result, the substrate quickly converts into product. And enzyme and products are released, right? If you look at this diagram, here in the first case, you can see substrate and enzymes active site has a specific geometric shape. And substrate, they have a specific shape, like a jigsaw puzzle. Jigsaw puzzle, right? The specific substrate comes and fits into the active site of enzyme and makes enzyme substrate complex in the second case. Then enzyme starts doing its work and converts the substrate into product quickly at a faster rate. Then these products are released and enzyme's active site becomes um, available again for the next substrate. An enzyme is not changed during this reaction enzyme is still over there. The substrate is changed, but the enzyme is not changed. 
So let's move to the next slide, which talks about lock and key model. Lock and key model. This model was proposed by a German chemist, Emil Fischer, in 1894. As the name suggests, lock and key model. Every one of us knows that every lock has a specific key. You can observe it today by taking a key and a lock and you can see a specific geometric shape of key that fits into a specific lock. It does not fit into another lock. It will, maybe it can fit, but it does not open the lock. A specific key is for a specific lock all over the world. Sometimes fake locks do operate, but I'm not talking about the fake ones. I am talking about the general ones, right? <laughs> so <clears throat> every key, every lock has a specific key because of its geometrical shape. According to this model, both enzyme and substrate possess specific shapes that fit exactly into one another, which explains enzyme specificity. If we look into this diagram quickly, closely, not quickly, uh, look at the first diagram. The both of them, substrate and enzyme, has a specific shape like a jigsaw puzzle. In, in jigsaw puzzle, specific pieces fits into specific other specific piece. They never fit at wrong place. So is the case of chicks. Just like a jigsaw puzzle, substrate has a specific shape which goes and fits into the active site of enzyme. The substrate shape is compatible with the enzyme's active site where it fits and starts its reaction. Now, in the second case, the enzyme is modifying the substrate. It is acting on the substrate and converts it into products. Look at the third diagram. Enzyme is modifying the substrate into something different thing. And that different thing is called as product. In this instance, the substrate is broken down, releasing two products. Obviously, it's not going to happen in the same way where the substrate is going to be broken down. The bonding can be changed and you can convert the substrate into a different thing. Not necessarily in breaking down, but here in this case, the substrate is broken down into two products. So this is what a lock and key model is that. It suggests a specific geometric shape, like a jigsaw puzzle, where this active side has a specific fixed shape. It is rigid. You cannot cha chain the shape of active site here in lock and key model, right? And this is all about lock and key model. It's very easy. Let's move to the next model, which is called as induced fit model. In 1958, American biologist Daniel Cushan, Daniel Cushan suggested a modification to lock and key model and proposed another model called induced fit model. According to this model, active site is not a rigid structure. Uh, I mean, this model agrees with lock and key model in a way in almost every way. This model also says that every substrate has a specific shape which fits into the exact enzyme. Not, a, not any chemical can act on a, speci on a specific enzyme. Uh, I mean, not any chemical can come and react with enzyme or make a complex with enzyme. A specific substrate Induced fit model also says that a specific substrate will go and bind with the specific enzyme. But the difference is that this model says 
active side is not a rigid structure. Active side is rather modified into the required shape. It molds into the specific shape of enzyme. I'm sorry, enzyme is basically modifying, molding into specific shape of substrate. A little bit modification. I mean, it's not too much or too wild molding, but the active site of enzyme is molding a little bit according to the shape of substrate. Let's look at this diagram. If you look at this diagram, you can see the substrate has a specific geometric shape. So is the case with enzyme. Here, the angles are almost same, but there is something different uh, from the shape of substrate. The active site, this is the site of enzyme, which is actually doing its role, which is going to catalyze the reaction. Active site is going to speed up the reaction. But if you look at the shape of substrate and then enzyme, there is little bit difference. Here the angles are fixed or kind of rigid, 90 degree angles. But here the angles are not 90 degree. So as soon as the substrate comes and fits into the geometric shape of enzyme, like a jigsaw puzzle, the active site of the enzyme molds into the shape of substrate. So here this model says, Active site of enzyme is not a rigid structure. It molds according to the shape of substrate. And it also says exactly like a lock and key model that every substrate has a specific, every substrate acts on a specific enzyme. Not a random chemical comes and binds with enzyme, right? This theory also does not suggest that. This theory also talks about specificity of substrate. So now I have covered all these models, the lock and key model and the induced fit model. Now you have a generalized picture of that how these um, models are working. Um, so how the enzyme is working and I'm left, I forgot to tell you about one thing that induced fit model is more acceptable than lock and key model. This model is more acceptable than uh, lock and key model by scientists. Scientists approve induced fit model more. Now the next topic, which is specificity of enzymes. As the name shows, enzymes are substrate specific. Um, as I told it to you before, so there are almost 2,000 known enzymes and each of which is involved in one specific chemical reaction. I mean, among 2,000 different enzymes, every one of them is acting on specific in substrates or a specific group of substrates. But they do not bind randomly to certain chemicals and catalyze a reaction. No, they choose specific substrate and that is because of a specific geometric shape. Enzymes are also substrate specific. The second sentence is saying the same thing, which means they do not bind randomly to a chemical. They bind to a specific chemical or specific group of chemicals. For example, the enzyme which breaks down proteins will only act on proteins. It will not act on starch or it will not act on carbohydrates. And any enzyme which acts on carbohydrates will not act on proteins. So is the case with fat digesting enzymes. Any fat digesting enzyme will act on fats, not on proteins not on carbohydrates, not on any other thing. Enzymes are substrate specifics. So here in this case, 
I must tell you that protease is an enzyme which acts only on proteins. It breaks down proteins, but it will not break break down starch or it will not break down carbohydrates. Only it's the carbohydrates digesting enzymes like amylase. Amylase will act on carbohydrates. Amylase will digest starch. Starch is also one of the example of carbohydrates. So amylase will act only on carbohydrates and or starch, but it will not act on proteins, right? Let's talk about lipase. Lipase is the enzyme which only acts on lipids or fats. You know the other name of fats is lipids. So lipase acts on lipids and converts them into fatty acid plus glycerol. Uh oh. <clears throat> this. Then lipase is the enzyme which acts on lipids and breaks down breaks down the lipids into fatty acids and glycerol. Remember this equation. Every time when we talk about the breaking down of lipids, mostly we say that they break down into fatty acids and glycerol. Not always the fatty acid is same, but the major thing they break, break down into is fatty acids and glycerol. So enzymes are substrate specific. Protein digesting enzymes will act on proteins. Carbohydrate digesting enzymes will act on carbohydrates. Fat, fat digesting enzymes will act on fats. Um, will you note something? I'll ask you to note the ending of all these enzymes, like protease, amylase, and lipase. These are the names of enzymes, three different enzymes. But all of them have one word, ase, at their ending. A-S-E, ase, protease, amylase, ASE and lipase. This is the characteristic feature of an enzyme. Uh, scientists put word ASE at the ending of the name of enzymes so that whenever we come across these names, we can easily recognize that these are enzymes. So for every, not for all the enzymes, but most of the time, enzymes have this word, have this Letters A's at the ending. Protease, amylase, lipase, which identifies them as enzymes. Next topic is specificity of different enzymes. I think I'm, I've started this topic, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Specificity of different enzymes is determined by the shape of their active sites. I've shown you the active site of enzyme, which has a specific geometric shape. There is a three-dimensional angles, and that geometric shape fits with the specific substrate, just like a lock and key. So how the geometric shape of active site of enzyme determines its specificity for substrate. Look at the figure in the book here, I think six point something, the, where there are three different substrates acting on a specific enzyme. I'm unable to find a picture closely which resembles to that picture on net. I tried my best to find out that picture, to find out that image, but I couldn't. So I'm telling you to look at to observe it from your books that look at that diagram which has three different substrates and all those substrates have a different shape and then there is one enzyme which has a specific shape of active site and just recognize like a jigsaw puzzle which substrate will fit 
into the shape of enzyme. Which substrate is going to act with the specific enzyme? So when you look at that diagram, you quickly say it's substrate number three, which fits exactly to the shape of enzyme, like a jigsaw puzzle, right? So what I'm trying to tell you here is that the enzyme has a specific geometric shape. It fits exactly into the specific substrate, like a jigsaw puzzle. So this is all about over here. Now I'm going to start the characteristic of enzymes. Although I was not ready to start this topic, but we have covered these laws quite quickly. Because in the classroom, we draw the diagram as well, which takes a lot of time. Here we are not drawing diagram, but I will tell you someday if there will be a difficult diagram, then to I will tell you how to draw that diagram. But I think so you can easily make the diagram of lock and key model and induce fit model. As I have told you earlier that how to make a diagram in classes, in regular classes. So I'm moving forward and I'm starting this topic, but definitely I will not cover all the points, just not to confuse you because today's, the topic is, today's uh, prominent topic is mechanism of action of enzymes. So lock and key model and induced fit model. Try to understand that topic, try to focus on that topic, and I will cover few of the characteristics of enzymes. Um, in 1878, German physiologist Wilhelm Kuhne first used the term enzyme. So it was Kuhne who introduced this term. He says that enzymes are globular protein. If you remember, I told it to you before that hemoglobin, hemoglobin is also globular protein. And I told you over there what globular means. The golmatol thing, remember? Golmatol, round in shape. So enzymes are round in shape proteins, all three dimensional round angles. Like all proteins, enzymes are made up of long linear chains of amino acids. This is what I have told it to you before that proteins are made up of linear chains of amino acids. Let's look at this diagram. We have studied in fourth chapter that first long chains of amino acids are formed in the rough endoplasmic reticulum where proteins are synthesized. First, a long chain is formed, which is called as polypeptide chain. Do you remember where I make the just dots, round dots to show you amino acid, amino acid, amino acid. Look at this. And every amino has a, has a specific complex structure. And I told it to you before that there are 20 different amino acids in nature. And they are binding here like a ball, another ball, another ball, another ball. Or like a bead in a necklace. A bead of a necklace. A beaded necklace. But it's a long chain of amino acids or less polypeptide chain, right? Then, then later on, this, these long chains fold into a three-dimensional globular protein. This is what I also told it to you before, but I told you in case of proteins. So I must tell you, enzymes are also protein in nature. They are made from the long linear chains of amino acids, and then those linear chains are folded into three-dimensional angles, like a helical chains or loops or different things combined together to make a protein or to make an enzyme over here. So enzyme has a three-dimensional structure, like a globular protein, a golmatol protein. Let's move to the next points. Almost all enzymes are proteins. That is, they are made up of amino acids. Okay? 
there are very few different enzymes which are i think cofactors which are not amino acids but the rest of the enzymes are proteins in nature second point most enzyme reactions are millions of times faster than those of those of comparable to uncatalyzed reactions what i'm trying to say it here is that if you compare a reaction same reaction without enzyme and then comparing the same reaction with enzyme the reaction without enzyme will take too much time and the reaction with enzymes will make that reaction millions of times faster right millions of times yesterday i was saying thousand times or something like that but actually it can speed up the reaction millions of times which is a very i mean amazing thing it can use these enzymes to catalyze the reaction to speed up the reaction and nature is using it but sometimes we also use enzymes in labs on living organisms to speed up the reaction even i think um to speed up the digestion uh and probiotics plus enzymes are available i haven't seen in pakistan but i'm i was seeing some sachet on internet which has probiotics plus enzymes probiotics are the one which actually boost absorb digestion um they are made up of different fungal strains and bacterial strains which are going to improve your upset stomach it's not antibiotic it's not something it is just improving your fl flora of your body bacteria and fungal strains to improve the digestion so probiotics ke sath enzymes be available hain i saw it on internet because enzymes will boost up digestion even our in our case so naturally we are using them but sometimes our stomach is upset or sometimes our digestion is not good so these enzymes are also used in those cases and i told it to you before just like catalysts enzymes are not consumed during the reaction enzymes stay where they are they are not spent they speed up the reaction but are not consumed over there the next point enzymes are usually very specific for the type of reaction and of for nature of their substrate i think we have discussed this in enzyme specificity topic that enzymes choose specific substrate it does not act on a random chemical they are very specific because of their specific geometric shape right um now the i will stop here can you hear a cat like noise ye the hamza is awake itni jaldi hamza ko utna nahi chahiye so i'm winding up here um because i don't want to proceed further because next points are a bit more complicated which i want to cover in the next lecture so if you have any questions you can ask me on whatsapp by sending me audio messages uh, and i will clarify that problem uh, you haven't asked me any question in the previous lecture kindly do ask me something if there is any problem if there is no problem then also mention on the that lecture is that you understood the topic okay allah hafiz for now Let me stop here. Allah Hafiz.